Hi everyone, welcome to Appy Hour Research Apps. Uh, my name is River and today we're gonna be talking about um, different applications that will help you in your research pro progress, whether it's collecting notes, um, finding articles to be researching, citations, staying organized. Um, we have a bunch of different apps that I'm gonna cover today. So I'm gonna share my screen with everyone and get started. So as we discussed, my name is River. Um, I'm a graduate assistant for the ADP Center for Learning Technologies. And today we're gonna talk about how to make your life easier with um, these apps that are specifically designed to help you with research and organization. So first is Dropbox, um, which is basically just like a storage and organization app. Um, Google Scholar is next, which is a great platform to kind of pull different journal articles and books and um, it's a great place to collect resources. Next is Citationcy, which is another app that helps you cite those resources. Evernote is a great platform to stay organized, collect notes. Um, also, you can use it for storage. Um, then there's Otter, which is kind of um, a real-time uh, text, sorry, voice-to-text um, recorder. Um, which can help with interviews and such. And then lastly, SurveyMonkey, which helps you create um, surveys very quickly that are that can be interactive and provide real-time results. So first is Dropbox. Um, like I said, it's a place you can store things such as photos, videos, documents, other files like PDF files, um, presentations. It gives you two gigabytes of free storage. So anything after that, I'm pretty sure you have to pay for and upgrade. Um, however, it is accessible from any device. So just like um, if you've ever used Google Drive, you can kind of log on to different devices like your iPad or your phone um, or your computer and just download the app if you wanna log on from your phone or uh, iPad and um, you can access it from there. Files are shareable by links, which is great. Um, and then you know anyone else that wants to view it would have to probably download Dropbox um, but it's very accessible and easy to use. Um, so just a quick tip is if you add your files to the favorites, um, you can actually view it offline. So you don't necessarily have to be connected to the internet um, and you can edit and add to it while you're offline. So if you don't have service, you can add to it. Um, so this is what Dropbox looks like from the web. Um, this is the home page. Here, if you look to the right, you can create a new file. Um, you can create a Google slot, like any kind of Google um, document, sheets or slides. Same thing with um, Word, Microsoft Word, um, or just Microsoft Office in general. Um, or you can create um, new files from the Dropbox uh, site itself. Then they will all be stored here in your recently um, used location um, and you can pretty much just organize it as well. You can see the things that you've shared here on the left. Um, you can keep track of them in folders, um, create links. So if we go to all files, this is where pretty much everything is gonna be stored. So next is Google Scholar. Um, Google Scholar is great. It's a huge database um, and it's very simple to use. All you have to do is pretty much search um, for any kind of scholarly literature, whether that's an article, um, books, theses, um, anything along that line. You can save your articles and you can also create your own library. Um, also, it provides very easy um, citations. Um, so I'm going to show you, and it helps, like you can cite it in MLA, APA, Chicago style, and it gives a couple of other options. Um, so let's go to Google Scholar. And basically you just type in scholar.google.com. This is where it goes. Um, you can even look up case law. Um, so if you're, you know, uh, a law major or your profession or your specialties in law, you can do that. Um, but if I wanted to, for instance, research attachment theory, it will give you 
thousands of different attachment theory related sources. And what I was mentioning about the citation would be these qu little quotations over here. You just click on it and it does it for you. You don't even have to um, type it into like an external source. You can copy it, highlight it, and then copy it, and then just plug it into your uh, works cited or your bibliography. Of course, if we wanna get a little bit more um, specialized or more um, specific, we can add more keywords. So for instance, attachment theory, let's say secure attachment. And then more uh, resources will pop up regarding secure attachment bases. And then you can also filter it through the year. Um, and then again, if I wanted to favorite something, so if I said a secure base, clinical applications of attachment theory, sounds interesting. It's actually by Bowlby, who is one of the creators of attachment theory. So we're gonna favorite it. And then if we go to my library, it's gonna pop up right here. And then if I wanna click it, you can even like also, if you wanna edit the way that it was cited, if you see something incorrect, you can do that here. Um, you can export it. So there's a lot that you can do with it. And it's very simple and easy to use. Next is um, this application called Citation C. It's very basic, very simple. Um, however, it does help you create accurate MLA, APA, and Chicago style citations in seconds. Um, so you can either enter the information manually, just like other websites allow you to do, like EasyBib, um, or I believe Purdue Owl might have an option to do that, um, or even Citation Machine. It's very, you can do that, or what I, think is great about it is that you can actually scan a barcode and it can create a citation in seconds. So say you have the actual book or say you have the actual journal article in front of you, it gives you the option to take a picture of it and it will create a citation for you in whatever style you want it to be in. Um, you can build and manage your bibliography and basically just copy paste it and then add it to your bibliography. And it also gives you the option to um, create in-text citations as well. Again, I suggest double checking um, because they're not always 100% accurate, but you know, it does create a shortcut once you are familiar with you know, the certain um, format that you wanna write your paper in. Um, here's a tip. If you categorize your references through projects and then you can just copy paste it to your work cited. So let me show you an example. So this is the online version. There is a, uh, version that you can use through the app. Um, and it's very similar. It's again, it's a super basic app, but it does work. So if you wanna create a new project, so say you're writing about attachment theory. Under this project, you can cite everything that you um, decide to use. So if I wanna cite a book, I can type in the, the book. So let's say, or no, let's do a journal article. Um, and let's say attachment theory. So it gives you, so let's say, let's use Bowlby's um, attachment theory article. So let's say that that's correct. It creates it right here. And this is your bibliography that you can literally copy paste, export, um, and basically it will just keep track of everything for you here. If you go back home, um, so this is how you can order and organize your projects. So this one it was for person-centered therapy. Um, you know, it creates, well, it was supposed to be for person-centered therapy, but um, I was just testing it out. So basically like it will create a list of everything that you use here. Um, if you wanna do an in-text citation, it also helps you with that. And I believe this is an APA. So if you wanna change it to MLA, if you wanna change it to Chicago, it gives you all the options here, um, which is great. On the app on the phone and, or you know on the iPad, it actually gives you the chance to scan it. 
Um, so here it doesn't because this is the web platform. Um, but oh, also it has like a Chrome extension. So if you wanna add it to your Chrome, um, you can do that as well, which is pretty cool. Um, proofreading. I'm not exactly sure what this is, but this wasn't, this isn't a part of it on the phone app. So yeah, it's pretty good. Um, it's very simple, but it's effective. Next is Evernote. Um, this is a platform that allows you to write notes, collect journal articles, store pictures, and so much more all in one place. Um, you can basically just keep track of all your things in one place and stay organized and it essentially helps you be more productive. Um, this is also accessible from multiple devices and you can collaborate with other people just like again on Google Drives. Um, and yeah, it's just a very productive way to stay organized and um, kind of making sure all of your things are in one place. Um, and then here's just a tip. You can share ideas and resources with your peers and colleagues when you do collaborate. So what does this look like? So this is Evernote. Um, this is pretty much like, this is a new note that um, I had created let's say grocery list. You can write here, just like a document. You know, let's say bananas. Etc. Um, then what you can do is you can edit it. Just like a word document. And then if you wanna insert picture, you can insert it from here, from this tab. You can do an attachment. So if someone had emailed you a form, you can add that here. If you wanna add a JPEG, you can add it through the photo. If you wanna create a table, you can do that as well. Um, so that's that. You can add your lecture notes um, right here. You can use this as a template too and kind of just copy paste it and then create a new one. Um, and then if you look to the left over here, you can actually create folders and shortcuts. So if we wanna drag this to the shortcuts, you could just drag it over here. Um, if you wanna create, and this is where like, it gives you so many different options. So if you wanna create a to-do list, a project plan, a meal planner, um, essay outline, anything, it gives you this option right here. If you wanna create a new notebook or like a new folder, you can create that over here on the notebooks list. Um, and then you can also share with people. So how we do that is let's say we go to the grocery list, you hit share at the top right, you can share this link, copy paste it or you can invite someone. So let's say I wanted to invite, I don't know, let's say I wanted to invite, I send it to my personal email. And then just like a Google doc or a Google slide or any kind of Google platform, you can allow them to either edit and invite, edit and view or just view. Um, so it's, and then same thing, like anyone with this link can view or you can disable the shareable link. So um, it's very, it's great, it's collaborative. So you both can be typing at the same time. You can highlight things. It's, um, it's a really great platform. Okay. Next is Otter. Um, this is a great platform. Um, it's, it has an app, it has an online, like a web ver version as well. Um, but basically what this is, is it creates speech to text transcriptions in real time or from pre-recorded audio. Um, so if you know, you're having an interview or if you wanna record a lecture in real time, all you have to do is set the um, recording up and it will record for you, um, record the voice and as well transcribe for you, which is amazing. 
or if you even want to um, use pre-recorded audio so like a video or say you forgot to set otter up during your interview or during the lecture but you had recorded it on your phone um you can use that and insert it or like import it onto into otter and it will do it for you um you can create notes um record interviews lectures even just like talk to yourself and keep track of your thoughts there um, you can even use it for personal use. It's a really, really great platform and you can export your transcriptions um, through, te like through text or PDF. Um, it gives you a couple of different options. Um, here's a quick tip. If you're looking for like a specific word, so say you had an interview and you wanna um, see, you know, how many times they use the word attachment theory or um, specifically when they discussed attachment theory, you can click on the summary keyword um, and which comes up at the top and it will take you to that section, those sections where that word was used. So this is what it looks like um, on the website. Again, if you wanna import it, you don't even have to like play it to, to Otter. It will take the file and just do it for you um, and convert it. If you wanna record, you would just press this button and it will record for you. Um, this is what it looks like you can title it and it literally like in real time it creates uh, speech to text and of course it's not always going to be accurate um, so you can always go back and edit it which is great so let's stop this here and then if you want to title it you can say um otter text oops So you can label it there and then you can also share it with people again create a link and other people can access it from there or you can export the text export the audio um, move it to a certain file like if you can create files on the left over here in folders um, if you want to create a new one you can just create a new folder like that and then you can start recording, you know, um, let's go back home. So Otter test is ready. So I want to drag it onto my, oops. I wanna move it to my folder. How do I do that? Oh, I have to do it from the actual. So move, we're gonna say new folder and it was moved to the new folder. If I wanna edit it, So you can hear what I'm saying as it is being transcribed or, you know, the text is being highlighted um, and you can always change it. So if I need to, if I need to edit or highlight it, you can do that. So I just press edit. You can add comments. Hang on. Oops. I think I just undo, undo, undo. Okay. So if I need to edit it, I can say hello. Even if it's not what I'm saying, but it's just the point you can uh, go back and edit it and change the words so it cur like accurately matches what the speaker is saying because it, it doesn't always um, translate or transcribe in the correct the exact way. Um, so you can go back and fix it yourself. So it's not gonna be 100% exactly accurate, but it will be roughly accurate and you just might have to make some tweaks. Um, also, you can keep track of the things that other people share um, share with you here um, and then your conversations if they're not in a folder they will be listed here but since I had organized them all they're going to be here but if you want to see everything it's going to be home if you want to search a conversation um, let's say the keyword was work 
it will list everything here. So that's Otter. And lastly, we have SurveyMonkey. Um, so SurveyMonkey allows you to create surveys and polls in minutes. It's super simple to use. You can send to anyone through um, a link uh, through the web, through email, or through social media. And basically, you can just monitor, monitor and analyze real-time results through the app. Um, quick tip is to use the survey templates that they provide um, in case you want to keep things simple. If you want to create a more elaborate or more uh, advanced survey, then you can create your own, but they do provide very simple and easy, easy to use templates. It. Um, if you have any questions, um, please let me know. Um, if you, you know, want to reach us, and you know, you don't have any questions right now, but you have some questions later, um, feel free to email crc01 at montclair.edu. Um, visit us at the ADP Center. It's in University Hall, or you can visit us on social media. It's just at ADP Center on Instagram and Twitter. And then on Facebook, it's also ADP Center.